In today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving Newton's second law, inclined planes, masses, and we're going to be figuring out the acceleration of an object that we're going to be pushing up the inclined plane. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should subscribe. Click the notification bell. Please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a nice positive comment. And also, don't forget to share this video. And of course, I made a bunch of other videos for this topic, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. We're going to be doing two separate example problems. The first one here without friction, the second one with friction. And this one, number one, says we have a large moving box that has a mass of 350 kilograms. It's pushed up a ramp with a force of 2,000 newtons. Of course, that force is going to be acting parallel to the plane of the ramp. And the ramp it makes an angle of 21 degrees with the horizontal. And we want to know what is the acceleration of the box. And once again, there's no friction between the box and the inclined plane. Now, we're going to be using Newton's second law, which says here the sum of the forces or the net force is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. We want to know it's the acceleration. So we're going to take the sum of the forces, the net force, and divide it by the mass. Now, in order to do that, we got to figure out which forces are acting on the object. And to do that, we're going to draw the free body diagram. And before we do that, we just want to point out that we have an x-axis and a y-axis. Up and to the right is positive on the x, and up is positive on the y. Now we can draw the forces that are acting on that object. Of course, we have the force of gravity, which acts straight down towards the center of the Earth. That's Fg, force of gravity. And then there's an applied force, which was given to us. And then, of course, also we have the normal force, the force that's normal to the surface of the inclined plane. And those are the free, three forces that you should draw for your free body diagram. Now, you can see the applied force is acting nicely along the x-axis. The normal force is acting nicely along the y-axis. But the force of gravity is neither along the y or the x. It's in between there, those two axes. And therefore, we need to break it into its component forces so that we can figure out what component of the force of gravity is acting down the inclined plane and pulling the box down the inclined plane because, of course, its natural tendency is going to want to be to slide down the plane. Okay, remember Fg is calculated as the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity, and that means that the y component is represented by this vector, that's mgy, and the x component is represented by that angle, excuse me, that vector just like that. So those are the two components, the y component and the s component of that force of gravity. Now we can go through and sum up those forces, and please remember also that this angle is 21 degrees, and by similar triangles we know that this angle here is also 21 degrees. So we have the sum of the forces. Now, before we do that, I like to just move this force because this is the component of the gravitational force that's acting down the plane. So I like to move it up there like that. And you can see, really, we have only two forces that are acting along the axis of motion, the x-axis. The uh, applied force is moving in the positive direction, and the mgx component is in the negative direction. So we're going to sum up those two forces. Those are the only two we need to be concerned about. Uh, we have a positive applied force and a negative or minus mgx, the x component of gravity. And of course, we're going to divide that by the mass. You can see that applied force acts in the positive direction, and we need to subtract mgx because it's acting in the opposite direction, like that. Now, you should remember that to calculate mgx, it's simply mg times the sine of the angle because that force was here, which is the opposite of our angle and the opposite has the sign in it like that. And we're not going to use the value in this equation, but we'll calculate it anyway because it's so much fun. The y component is simply mg times the cosine of theta. That's the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity times the cosine of 21 degrees. Please remember also that these two forces, the y component of gravity and the normal force, are equal in magnitude opposite in direction. So just to be clear, that those two forces are equal to each other. Of course, one acts in the negative direction and one acts in the positive direction. Now, we can sum up the forces. 
We're going to calculate first, of course, the MGX force, and we'll do the MGY force just for the heck of it. I like to calculate the magnitude of forces before I put them into the equation. So we have MGX is MG times the sine of the angle, M being the mass, 350 kilograms. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then, of course, the sine of the angle, the angle being 21 degrees. There is no friction in this case. And that gives us an X component of the gravitational force is 1,230 newtons. Okay, let's just calculate the Y component. We're not going to use it in this problem, but we have 350 times 9.81 times the cosine of 21, and you can see the Y component is 3,205 newtons. Now, this is the equation that we're going to use to calculate the acceleration. We're going to sum up the force. So we have the applied and the MGX. The applied force was given to us. MGX, of course, we just calculated, divided by the mass. We can just do that as 2,000 newtons minus 1,230 newtons divided by the mass, which is 350 kilograms. And if you do that mass, you mass, if you do that math, you will get that the acceleration of the object, which is in the positive direction, up the inclined plane, is 2.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so that is our problem for no friction. And now we're going to do basically the same problem, but introduce friction into the situation. Okay, so now we have basically, you can see here the same problem. We have a large box, 350 kilograms, and the force applied is 2,000 newtons, and we have 21 degrees. And in this case, the coefficient of friction between the ramp and the box is 0 0.15. Remember, the coefficient of friction it has no units on it. And then we want to know the acceleration. And this course, in this case, of course, we have friction. Now we're going to start off basically, it's the same thing. We just got to get the friction force in there. Start out with the um, in Newton's second law, F equals MA. We're going to sum those up, divide by the mass to get the acceleration. And we're going to set up our X and our Y coordinate system. We're going to draw all the forces. We have applied force. Now, in this case, we have friction force. And the friction force, because we're going to be pushing up the ramp, the friction force is going to be acting in the direction opposite of motion, so it's going to be acting in the downward direction. It's important to remember that, and I drew it right there along that way. And then we have the normal force again, so those would be the four forces that you would draw for the free body diagram. Now, once again, all the forces except the gravitational force are acting along the x and the y axis, so therefore we have to get the components of the y and the x, and then we're going to move the x up there like that. And you can see now we have to sum up three different forces. We have the applied forces acting in one direction. That's our pushes up. And you can imagine, because there's friction between the box and the surface, that that's acting in the opposite direction. And we still have the x component of the gravitational force that acts in the uh, negative x direction also. So now we're going to put in here that we have the applied force, and we're going to be minus the x component of gravity. And we're also going to have to subtract out of that the friction force, because really these two forces are acting against our push up the ramp, divide by the mass again. And you should remember that, once again, when we calculate the x component, it's just mg sine of theta. Now, you can see here we have the, um, the applied force is 2,000. We have the x component of the gravitational force. I think that was 1,230 newtons. But we still have to calculate what is the friction force. And you remember, the friction force is mu times the normal force. OK, so this is how we're going to get the friction force. We know mu, but we don't know the normal force. But as I said in the previous video, the normal force is equal to that y component of the gravity. Because these two forces, as you can see, are opposite in direction, but they are equal in magnitude. Now, mgy, we said earlier, is calculated as mg times the cosine of theta. And that means by substituting these values in, we can get the friction force as mu, the coefficient of friction, times the mass times g times the cosine of theta. So now we have all the forces that we can calculate. We have the uh, applied force, which we were given. We have mgx, which we can calculate. And now we have the equation for the friction force that we can calculate, this being the equation for the x component of gravity, and this being the equation 
or the friction force, which we can do all of that right here and then plug everything in. Once again, that's 1230 newtons. Now, in this case, because there's gravity, we have to multiply this times the coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.15 times 350 times 9.81 times the cosine, and you get that the friction force in this case is 481 newtons. Now, here's our equation for the acceleration, and you can see that we have the applied force 2000 minus the x component, which is acting in the opposite direction of our push, and minus the friction force, which acts in the opposite direction of motion, which is the opposite direction of our push also. So we're going to subtract those two out, and then we're going to divide by the mass. And in this case, with friction, coefficient of friction being 0.15, we get that the acceleration, of course, is going to be less because of friction, and it's 0 0.83 meters per second squared. Okay? So there you go. That was a step-by-step -step demonstration of how you can solve those problems when you have a mass on an inclined plane. You're pushing up the inclined plane, and in the first case, we had no friction, and in the second case, we had friction. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things or I think it's now I have five things that you should do. Please subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Click the notifications bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.